Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. So instead of parking on the street, our OP's neighbor turned his lawn into a parking lot and thinks that other people now do not get a park on the street in front of his house? He's basically trying to eliminate public parking so he has permanent parking. The level of entitlement is astounding. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. My neighbor's mad at me because I parked in front of his house. So I got home last night around 2 a.m. and parking down the road from my house in front of my neighbor's house, it's really tough to find street parking sometimes, so I was glad to find something and park there without thinking much about it. When I get to my car around noon, I notice a note on my window with the following, how am I supposed to get my cars out? And I noticed that he had some vehicles parked on his lawn. I moved my car forward as to not block his cars and started to pump some air in my tires. The guy showed up and first thing he said was, you're lucky I didn't get the car towed. I told him, you can't tow my car because I'm not blocking a driveway. But if you'd like, I can put you in contact with someone who can build you an approach. Then he goes off on, he can, and if I wanted, he can call the cops now. I've lived in the neighborhood for about 20 years, so I recognized him and realized he owns a landscaping company who I've witnessed dumping their waste on the side of the street in my neighborhood. So I told him, you can call the police all you want, but I'll do the same whenever your employees are dumping on the side of the road again. He told me to go ahead and do it and just walked away. So you parked in front of his house, not his driveway? Like in a typical street spot? What on earth is he complaining about? And our second story. How not to steal at the self-checkout. So I've worked in retail for the last seven years, and four to five of them were running the self-checkout at a grocery store. We had people try to steal all the time. I got very good at saying, I'm sorry, but that last item didn't seem to scan. Can you try it again? Since I had to say it like 50 times a day, and we weren't ever allowed to accuse the customer of stealing, even when it was extremely obvious they were. Usually, they'd try once, and when I caught them, they didn't do it again because they knew I was watching. This woman and her mother that I'm about to talk about were not one of these people. She was maybe early to mid-30s, and the mother was probably 60s or 70s. The first time I saw them, they were both on the same machine. The daughter was using the machine, and the mother was handing her the items, and I first noticed something was wrong when I looked at my screen and saw what they were ringing up. Our screen shows the item just like they scanned and the price. Their screen looks something like this. Banana, $7.87. Banana, $6.54. Banana, $5.50. Banana, $8.34. I was very confused until I went over and saw they were just putting their items, sometimes multiple at a time, on the scale and entering in the code for bananas. Hey, they had probably $60 or $70 worth of meats in their bag, plus a bunch of other random and expensive items. I went up to her, kind of shocked by how insane it was that she thought I wouldn't notice, but my usual line didn't really apply here, and it took me a second to finally say, um, I'm sorry, but nothing in your bags is scanned. You can't just weigh all your food items like that. And I'll never forget what she did. She turned to me, looking a little confused at first, and said, oh, okay, I'll fix it then just went back to putting her items on the scale and trying to weigh them again. I was speechless. I don't know what could possibly make her think that they would get me just to be like, oh, all right, have a nice day, and just let her continue to steal. After a few seconds of me trying to process what just happened, I said to her, I'm sorry, but I need to cancel your order. You need to take everything out of the bag, and she cuts me off and completely changes her tone. I said I'll fix it. I know what I'm doing. She goes back to weighing her items, and I'm just standing there like, WTF just happened. So I just walk back to my screen because we can lock any machine from there, and that's exactly what I did. Then immediately called for a manager. Manager gets there, and I explain what happened while they're standing at the machine with multiple items on the scale and still trying to keep using the machine, even though it's clearly locked. Manager goes over and talks to them, but at this point, I have like five or six other customers that are also using the checkout that I need to help, so I didn't get to hear what my manager said to them. A few minutes later, the manager cancels their order, and they move their items to another machine. He tells me they'll scan everything again and to just watch them 
then he leaves. Now they're at a closer machine to me so I can see them better, and for a while everything's fine. They aren't weighing anything, and just as I think this whole thing's over, I see her scan one item, pause, and look around, then grab like three other items and put them all in the bag with the item she just scanned. I was looking right at her. She knew I was looking right at her. She goes to scan another item, and I walk up to her again and say, You need to stop. Only one thing in that bag scanned. You need to take them out and scan them again. She just looks at me, annoyed, and sighs, turns back, and tries to keep scanning her next item. I'm absolutely done with this crap. I lock her machine again and call the manager back again, tell him what happened. At this point, it's very busy in the store, and everyone else is waiting on me to help them, so I leave again and let the manager deal with it. He ends up canceling her order and scanning all of the items for them. And I'd like to add, at this point, the woman's mother has not said a single word. She just kind of acts like nothing is even happening. The daughter's very upset, but doesn't make a scene or raise her voice. Just keeps saying this like, just let me do it myself. Why are you taking so long? I know what I'm doing. He finishes scanning everything and they pay and leave. I'm like, thank God this is finally over. Oh boy, was I wrong. These two women came back to the store two to three times a week for months. They never tried to weigh their items again, but they would always scan one thing, then try to put multiple items in the bag without scanning them, which was even more stupid than weighing them because the machine locks up if the weight doesn't match, so even if I wasn't looking, it's obvious what happened. Sometimes they were together, sometimes they tried to split up, so it was harder for me to watch both of them, and all this time, the mother never spoke a word to me. When I stopped her, she just looked confused, then the daughter would come over and rescan the item for her. It was always stupid things like a can of soda or a bag of chips. The daughter would always try to steal more expensive meat or seafood. After, they would almost always go to the lottery machine behind me and buy a bunch of tickets, then leave. I told the managers and security every time this happened, but they never did anything about it. I eventually stopped working self-checkout and moved around to different departments in the store. Never saw them after that again, but I was curious what happened to them. So I asked my coworker who'd been working the self-checkouts for longer than I had, and he told me she'd gotten arrested. He said the store finally called the cops on them, and at least the daughter was arrested, but he didn't know what happened to the mother. I tried to ask the managers for more details, but they never told me. The security guy didn't work at our store anymore, and the new one knew nothing about them. All I know is that I haven't seen either one of them in two years, and I hope never again. They made my job 10 times worse for months, and I didn't even get the satisfaction of watching them get arrested when it finally did happen. Management may have been compiling the incidents of theft until they reached a dollar amount high enough to be worth prosecuting. And our last story. HOA Karen tore down part of my house. I've been owning this house for over 90 years now. Two floors and a fancy lookout tower that stands one floor above the house Bought this old house about 10 years back and put in a whole lot of effort and money to bring it up to snuff while still maintaining its historic beauty. Now that our right side of the neighborhood went through some renovation recently, used to be these small worker class frame houses from the last century, but now they've gone and demolished. And in their place, they built a new houses with this fancy pants homeowners association with the same old stuck up snobs as residents. It's like a city with the Squidwards from SpongeBob SquarePants but instead of Squidward's, it's infested with Karen's. Right from the get-go, they've been trying to drag me into their little cobble. Every time, I've replied with the firm, no, or just plain ignored them, but they never stopped bothering me. One of the rules of their homeowners association was that houses shouldn't exceed a certain height, and it seems my old-fashioned lookout tower was like a red flag to a bull for an HOA's Karen. They even had the audacity to offer me a deal. If I joined their HOA, they'd chip in 30% of the cost to convert my tower into a roof that met their height requirements. Now, I wouldn't have agreed to it even if they paid me the whole darn value of my house. Annoying the residents of that HOA was priceless. One winter, I went over to my folks' place for a week to spend Christmas with my brothers and their families. While I was away, Karen hired some construction crew to demolish my tower, leaving it covered with some flimsy tarp that the wind blew away the very next day. Half my house got covered in snow, and in a week, that snow melted and turned my laminate floor into mush. I called up my brother, who happens to be a lawyer, and was with me during the holidays. We started preparing a lawsuit. 
He found some old documents in the archives that indicated my house also had historic value. The security cameras at the cafe across the street, which aren't part of the HOA, helped us locate the construction company Karen hired. Turns out she cooked up some documents claiming the house belonged to the HOA and hired a company that brings in foreign workers. So Karen had to cough up the money to repair my floors, repaint the walls, and pay for the reconstruction crew that could restore the historic facade of my house. All in all, it cost her just shy of 700,000 euros. This story highlights the importance of standing up against unjust actions and seeking legal recourse when necessary. It serves as a reminder of the potential consequences individuals may face for overstepping boundaries and disregarding the rights of others. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.